Alrighty guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about uh, FTR Enduros, kind of a how-to video. Uh, this video has been highly requested by a lot of people on the FTR Facebook page and just people I've talked to. And I really enjoyed the Enduro series, so I kind of wanted to do this video uh, right before the Richelum Enduro. I'm actually at Richelum right now and uh, before the upcoming Alligator Enduro as well. Both of them are different formats, so we're going to talk about both formats. Uh, the start-restart format, which is your typical uh, FTR Enduro, and as of the past year or so, they've implemented um, the uh, uh, I'm brain fart here. They've implemented the sprint formats as well. So we'll talk about both. The first part of this video is going to be about start-restart, because that is typically the, the, the most talked about and the most um, complicated, I would say, even though it's not really that complicated. Sprints are really, really simple, so we can talk about that at the end. So if you're confused, or maybe you're just interested um, about sprint stuff, go ahead and fast forward to the end. So basically, start from the beginning. You sign up, you can either pre-sign up, or when you get to the race, go up to the sign up trailer, just like you would at a hair scramble or anything like else, you know, any other race like that, motocross race, whatever. You're gonna get you, um, pay your money, you're gonna get your wristband or whatever, and you're gonna get a packet. This is for a start restart enduro. So this one, I'm gonna cover the gentleman's name, but this is row one rider A. All right, so today, um, or no, I shouldn't say today, the original Mendoza is going to have five per five people per row, a total of 40 rows. So each, um, each row is going to have five people, so you'll be A, B, C, D, E, and you'll be um, either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 40, depending on what row you signed up for. So when you get this packet, you come with a few things. Go ahead and pull it all out here. I think that's it. All right. First thing you're going to get is this. For a start restart format, I believe all the FTR Enduros are still using Fender cards for their start restart format Enduros. This will be duct taped to your front fender somehow. Uh, a little trick here is get yourself a piece of cardboard or an old cereal box or something. Uh, go ahead and put it on the back of it. Put it on your um, fender and go ahead and tape just around the edges of it. You can even um, uh, make sure you don't cover the top of it because they have to ride on this. And you can even get duct tape and you can kind of tuck it under the fenders and a lot of the KTM fenders are kind of weird. So we always had to do that. Um, so that's gonna be really important. We'll talk more about how to read this fender card as you go through the race later. You're also gonna get two stickers. This one is your front number plate sticker. Like I said, this is row one rider A. So this is the first dude. Um, also, this goes on the side of your helmet, row 1, rider A. So let's say you're row 20, rider B, you'll have a 20 and a B, right? So super simple there. So basically, after you get everything all set up, you go to sign up, you get all your fender cards and your stickers on. The next objective is to go to the rider's meeting, where at a hair scramble or other races, there might not necessarily be a rider's meeting. Here, it's pretty important. You can go to a rider's meeting. There will be a lot of information that you might find interesting about the race, conditions, stuff like that. And this rarely happens, but it's also fairly important. Um, emergency rule changes can happen at the riders meeting. I believe if you have a majority of the racers at the riders meeting and there's a majority vote, they can decide to continue the race if for some reason the club had to go below the actual mileage allowed, which I think is 40 now. It used to be 50 or 60 or something. So if the club had to go below 40 for whatever reason, rain or whatever, um, everyone there would have a chance to vote. So if you wanted to ride and you were still there, make sure you vote. That hasn't happened in a while, but the riders meeting, that's where that would happen if that is. So after the riders meeting, you got your information, gear up, get ready. And what you're going to do is you're going to make your way to the start. You're going to find uh, everyone else on your row. So if you're row one, that's really easy. Go all the way up to the start. There's going to be um, this thing that is, call it, I don't even know what to call it. I guess you would call it a, uh, a number chart. It's basically this thing where you flip numbers, right? So it, it flips to 901, flips to 902, 903, 904. Basically every minute, this card, a flip card is what I'm gonna call it, uh, is gonna change each time. So basically you go up your row one, you find every, all your buddies on row one, uh, all the guys that are ABC and whatever, and you get up on row one, and you should be going off when that flip card flips to 901. So when you get that one minute mark, that is when you go. This is really important because that is the start of your race, and typically 
from going to the start and when you start you go into a actual race section so you at that point you are on the clock and you are racing um, basically if you're row 20 what you would do is as the rows got less and less and less you would go up on when it said 919 and then when it flips to 920 your row will go your five people right I don't know if I mentioned this there's usually five people per row sometimes there's four clubs do it differently um, but it's really important to go off on your row on time there will usually be club members around there will be other people you can ask if you get confused but it's also really important to um, make sure you pay attention to that person because they're going to count down from five or ten typically five count down five four three two one they'll flip the card and you go all right so that's pretty simple at this point you're going right you're on row one you got there they flipped to 901 you left the most important part is this, making sure, because this is what you're going to get scored on at the end of the day. So right before you go, typically somebody, a club member or whatever, will write right here where it's time arrived, section one. So right there, they're going to put your time, 9.01, right, because that's when you started the race. If you're on row 20, they're going to put 9.20. If you're on row 40, they're going to put 9.40, right? So you're going to start at 9.01. You're going to go right after that flip card goes to 9.01. You race through that section whatever you're going to get to a checkout there'll be club members there and there will be um, a person that's going to stop you and make sure they stop you if they don't they're not doing their job and make sure that they write you right here where it says line two line two is going to be your checkout so basically you checked into the section now you're checking out of the section and they will put down a number that you arrived so let's say they write down 905 and you left on 901 what that means is you are three minutes late on the section. This is all adjusted time. So when you get there and they put 9.05, you can calculate how many points you dropped on that by calculating, you know, 9.01 or 9.05 minus 9.01. Uh, you lost four minutes there. So that will be your total score. So far, it will be four. The goal is to get the least amount of points possible. So let's say you zeroed every section, right? So it means you came in at 9.01, boom, 9.01 again zero points were given on that section that's your goal the club's goal is to make you not do that so i'm sure most of you will not there may be a few double riders that zero a section every now and again so now that you've checked out what happens at this point is typically you will either go into a transfer section or you will either go into a transfer and a reset or sometimes just a reset so what i mean when i say a transfer section is you will get up you'll check out and there will be a amount of trail or jeep road or whatever until you get to your next check in to the race now this is important just take your time relax this is the club giving you time off the clock to get to your next check in after every check out before you go and check into the next race section there will be a reset time each club will be different between each test could be different um, i believe on the route sheet that will explain it not 100 percent sure but basically, you can ask anyone there. They'll be like, oh, it's a 20-minute reset. So let's assume it's a 20-minute reset. And like we said, you were four minutes late to that test section. So what now, that now means is because you were four minutes late with a 20-minute reset, go ahead and do the quick math there. Um, you are now 16 minutes waiting before you need to go out again into race section two. Okay, so how do you know when to go out into race section two? There will be another flip chart another flip card with those numbers when it says 901 you need to be on the line and going that person will count down from five so when you get there there might be a bunch of other people around after you check out like oh you know hey what's the clock at oh it's not even at nine o'clock yet you're fine or let's say you're on row 40 and it's at 920 well you have that full 20 minute reset before you go there could be up to 45 minutes for a reset but between sections i feel like that's a lot uh, maybe for a slower sea rider, that's a good amount of time because they might be 15 minutes late on a section or more, right? So that significantly decreases their time to go out for that next section. So like we said, if let's say you're sitting there and uh, you're not paying attention and the row goes to 902, 903, and you're not paying attention, you're not going with your row, those will be points automatically deducted because you did not start at 901. When you go out for that section two or you go out for section three, every section after, someone will be riding on your card what time you go out. So when you're lined up, they will put 901 if you're on time. 
if you're not on time and you go out at 904 they're going to put 904 and automatically you started three minutes later than everyone else on your line and that'll be three minutes later than you would have been if you started on time so it's a really easy way to lose points if you're not paying attention to that flip chart most of the time you will have a little bit of time at each test section to make sure that you get there on time all right so after that you go on you'll go into test three you'll be racing at that point you're racing blah 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 you check out a person will then once again when you check out right on your fender card a time all right so you know maybe you were 10 minutes late on that section you would know that because it would say 9 11 and that makes 10 minute difference from 901 okay so now you know you drop 10 on that section the only way you'll know who else is in your class is if you maybe know that dude is in your class and you walk over look at his fender card or he knows he's already calculated it right so besides that that's pretty much the basics uh, you'll come through uh, this here at Richland we're actually doing a two loop this year so you'll come back to camp at lunch and you'll go back out for the same loop again um, each section will be different mileage and that's unknown and for the most part as long as this is right this is your key so you want to make sure every check-in every check out somebody is writing something on that card and like I said it's very easy to calculate what your score is so far okay um, other things with the start restart format is on transfer sections you do not need to rush for the most part let's say you're 20 minutes late you crashed you watered your bike out but you finally got it started you made it to that checkout and they're like oh, okay this is a 20 minute reset well crap your line is about to go and maybe you have a mile uh, 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 transfer trail before you get to the new check-in well you better boogie and get to the uh, the check-in before that flip guard turns your time or you'll start losing more time so stuff like that's really important to take care of everyone's really friendly so if you see a club member wearing an orange shirt whatever ask them questions hey how long is this reset or hey i don't, I don't really understand how to do the math on this again they should be able to help you for the most part all right ask your fellow racers there's going to be guys out there that's done hundreds of enduros they know how to do it all right so that's basically start restart format at the end of the day make sure you bring this this is a double-sided thing so when it's written it's also written on a page under this so go ahead and bring this to the uh, scoring trailer. This is the only way you're going to get scored. If you don't bring this, you will not get scored. So that's really important. Uh, after you get, you know, uh, done with the finish, go ahead and bring this to the scoring trailer. They might take it from you at the finish. If they don't, just bring it to the scoring trailer. All right, so that's pretty much it for the start-restart format. Other than that, there is the sprint enduro format. This is really, really simple. Um, for the most part, you get to go out to each test whenever you want there's not a set time like there is in the start restart but the key with those is it's total elapsed time and every section added together is your final score so we're at the start restart it's every minute you drop uh, adds to your score you want to have the lowest score in this case you want to have the lowest total time at a sprint enduro so you might go into test one you might start on your row for just test one i believe they want you to some of them don't I'm not sure how that works you start you go in and you might race as hard you race as hard as you can for that test section. You check out. Typically with uh, sprint enduros these days, they have transponders. I think the Moto Tele transponders are now are all with the sprint enduros, which is really cool. Um, so they'll just kind of scan you in, or you'll go under one of those things and it'll scan you through, and that'll make sure they'll take your time. Whatever. There's not a fender card for the uh, sprint format enduros. So basically, your total lapse time. You get to um, a test section, you can wait before you have to go out, um, and that way you can get fully rested. The only specific criteria is if you wait too long, you might hour out. There'll be an hour out time for each one of those checks, and you don't want to wait that long, but usually you won't have to worry about that. Go when you're comfortable to go, race as hard as you can in each check, and your total elapsed time at the end of the day will be your score, and whoever has the least amount will win. So basically, that's the only two um, Enduros that FTR does. There is two other formats that FTR does allow. I don't know any clubs that have done them, and I'm not familiar with either of them. Um, but basically, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you guys come out to um, Richland Enduro. I hope you guys come out to the Alligator Enduro. Um, both of them are different formats, so you guys can try them both out, learn. It's really not that complicated. I know a lot of people get scared when they hear the word Enduro. But it is pretty easy, and I hope you guys will come and enjoy. And if you have any questions, 
uh, comment down below or you can even comment in the Facebook post if I end up posting this on Facebook. I'm actually at Richland right now, so if you comment in the next few days, I will not be able to respond. Hopefully this actually gets up in time. Uh, if not, you'll see this after the Richland Enduro once I get service again. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.